kiboro unachokichuma ni kile unachokichuma kupitia mkono wako na ukifanya dini yako ndo njia ya kutega uchumi wako basi itakuwa hauna msimamo katika dini yako utasema kulingana na yule يا الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والعاديات ضبحا فالموريات قدحا فالمغيرات صبحا فأثرن به نقعا فوسطن به جمعا إن الإنسان لربه لكنود وإنه على ذلك لشهيد وإن خير لشديد أفلا يعلم إذا بعثر ما في القبور وحصل ما في الصدور إن ربهم بهم يومئذ لخبير الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله 
الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة
Dear brothers and sisters, kindly request that you sit down so that we can begin with our session. We can begin with the program today. Brothers, we request you to kindly remain seated. Brothers at the bank, kindly let's get settled. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man wa lah amma ba'd. Respected brothers, sisters and elders, it is definitely with immense joy and anticipation that we extend a warm and heartfelt welcome to our distinguished guest, a renowned scholar, inspirational speaker, none other than Mufti Ismail Mank. Mufti Ismail Manki is a figure who requires no formal introduction. Nevertheless, a brief acknowledgement serves to enhance our appreciation for his presence amongst us. Mufti Ismail Mank is a distinguished global Isma Islamic scholar hailing from Zimbabwe, underwent his Sharia ah studies in the Islamic University of Medina. His scholarly journey continued in India, where he pursued ifta. Hence his title Mufti, and he was later bestowed with an honorary doctorate of social guidance from Aldersgate University. Adding to his accolades, Mufti Mank has amassed well-deserved recognition for his extensive contributions, earning a place in the esteemed list of the top 500 most influential Muslims in the world. He has millions of followers across his social media platforms. His personable style, and down-to-earth approach has made him one of the most sought-after scholars in time. May Allah keep him steadfast and graciously accept his endeavors. Ameen. Let's say Ameen all together. In the gentle embrace of our mosque's sacred dome, welcome Mufti Mank to this spiritual home. With wisdom as your guide, like a radiant sun, your presence enlightens a journey began. Words woven with grace, a symphony of insight. In the tapestry of faith, your wisdom takes flight. The echoes of welcome, the echoes of welcome resonate in our hearts as you share with us divine knowledge imparts. Amidst these worlds where prayers and duas ascend high, Allah the Almighty we invoke to protect you from above the sky. Do join me, respected brothers and sisters, in welcoming Mufti to kindly grace the podium with his honorable presence. And as an announcement, inshallah, the Adhan of Isha will take place once Mufti is done with his talk. Thereafter, Salah will take place immediately. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahi wa alhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. I am very, very excited to be here this evening in this Parklands Masjid. The last time I was here, the last time I was here, who knows when that was? MashaAllah, 2020, alhamdulillah. And now, four years later, or three and a half years later, we are back in the same masjid. We ask Allah Almighty to accept it from us. The Echoes of Enlightenment is the name given to the theme of this particular tour of Kenya. I delivered the first talk wherein I mentioned 
the importance of the message that was brought by all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now I want to look at a few of the struggles and the messages of particular prophets of Allah. Because Allah says, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبَرَةٌ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Indeed, in their stories, there are lessons for those with sound intellect. There are lessons. So when we read a story in the Qur'an of some previous prophet, it's not just for us to say, Subhanallah, look at what happened. And we stop there. But rather, subhanallah, look at what happened. How does it affect me? And what lessons can I learn from it? Because the echoes of those stories will continue to enlighten our path to this day and right up to the day of judgment. So one of the prophets, the early prophets, was a man known as Nuh alayhi salam. The prophet Noah, may peace be upon him. Unique prophet in the sense that the Quran makes mention of several details unlike other prophets. For example, the exact number of years that he called his people. How many years was that? How many? 950 years. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فَلَبِثَ فِيهِمْ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ إِلَّا خَمْسِينَ عَامًا When we sent Noah, may peace be upon him, to his people, he stayed with them for a thousand years less fifty. That means he stayed with them for 950 years. That does not mean he lived for 950 years. He lived for longer than that. But with his people, 950 years, he called them towards Allah. You and I are fortunate that in our lives, we worship the one who made us alone. Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, Allah Almighty. Remember, your success and my success is connected to my connection and yours with the one who made me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I have a connection with Allah through my prayer, through my ibadah and my worship, through my do's and don'ts, then I have succeeded. The minute I unplug, the, electric, the electricity is off. You can have a sophisticated apparatus. You can have an amazing iron or hoover or microwave or stove. Or whatever it may be, you can have a Tesla, one of those electric cars. But if there is no electricity, what is the use of that? It just looks nice from far, but it doesn't work. There is no electricity. There's nothing to plug it in. Somehow you need to make a plan. You need to connect it. You need to ensure that it's working. If there is a battery, you need to recharge that battery. If you don't, it won't work. My prayers five times a day. I consider it the recharging of my battery. If I don't connect, something will go wrong. Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib and Isha. If I don't connect, something will go wrong. What is the connection? I need to plug in and fulfill my units of prayer. That's it. I have no compromise. My brothers, my sisters, you know what I am saying is not new to you. It's only a reminder. My beloved children, and I see many of the young who are here, I want to acknowledge you. I appreciate the fact that you are here. If I could, I would greet everyone. But we are human beings. It's not humanly possible to do that. However, why I appreciate you is it gives me great joy to see young faces today in Jumu'ah at Jami'ah Masjid. I saw the young who filled the first and second sections of the masjid. They must have been there from 9 o'clock in the morning. Am I right? Some of you were there. Agreed? Wallahi, I saw these faces, young boys, and I thought to myself, may Allah grant you goodness. It's a very good sign. The deen, 
The deen is always upright. It does not need us. We need it. We need it. And if you look at the ummah, the ummah needs us. The ummah needs us to be correct members of the ummah. What is the point of saying, I am part of the ummah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but I don't follow, I don't have a feeling. Today what is happening in Gaza, for example, is a shining example of how the ummah came together. Don't you feel our brothers and sisters are struggling? They are oppressed. They are hurt. They are being killed. A genocide has occurred and is continuing to occur. We feel it. If you don't feel it, can you really call yourself a member of the same ummah? May Allah grant them victory. May Allah Almighty bless them and may He forgive us for our shortcoming and our weakness. May Allah Almighty forgive us because in a way we have failed them. May Allah forgive us. Nonetheless, if I do not get up for Salatul Fajr, how will I help the Ummah? If I am not there for Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, what will happen to me? If I develop bad habits, what's going to happen to me? You are young, you are coming up. Do not have friends who are going to chase you away from the path of Allah. You need echoes of enlightenment in every circle that you are in. Starting with your family, my beloved fathers and mothers who are here this evening and who may listen to this later, invest your time in your children. Spend a lot of time with them. Teach them goodness. Take them out to show them what the world is all about, what's right and wrong. If you don't spend time with your children, they might learn the wrong things from outside and you will regret. Where do the kids learn how to do drugs? Mostly it's outside the house. Do you agree? Because sometimes the parents have just blinked their eyes. Before they know it, it's too late. Addicted. My beloved children, if you have bad habits, we are here to help you. We don't want to condemn you and doom you. We want to help you so that you can come. We need you. You are the leaders. When you have bad habits, how will you lead? When you go around pinching and stealing, when you go around with dirty habits of immorality and values that are not part of our faith, that are completely unacceptable, for example, we abuse, we deceive, we hurt and hate. That's not what we are taught by all the prophets of Allah. Why I say this is Nuh alayhi salam struggled with his own son mentioned in the Quran. He was a prophet of Allah. He had a discussion with his son, but the son was affected by some external factors. He didn't want to worship Allah. He didn't want to follow his own father who was a prophet of Allah. So I tell my sons and my daughters who are here, listen to the good word. Why should you follow the rules and the regulations of Islam? It's a question. Because they are filled with the highest level of morality and values. And they are filled with discipline. And they will build you into a leader, into a powerful person who is really sober and amazing. You get up in the morning, you pray to the Lord of the worlds. You are never sleeping at that time. You are a leader. Those who achieve do you think they snore up to 11 o'clock every day? They can't achieve. Young boy got up. He felt that he owned a Bugatti and a Ferrari. Only to realize that was five minutes ago in my sleep. He looked around as he gets up. He says, there's nothing. Oh, I, what should I do? I need the car back. There's only one way to get it back. Go back to sleep. Right? Or oh, work hard and years later you will achieve. There's nothing like quick money. You need to work hard. Work very hard. One year, two years, five years, you might be able to afford a place 
Another place, the young brother is looking at me. May he wants to get married. May Allah grant him a good spouse. Alhamdulillah. It's not going to come for free. Man istata'a minkumul ba'ata falyatazawwaj. The Prophet ﷺ says, whoever is able and capable should get married. Are you starting to ask yourself, how am I going to become able and capable? Well, if you're drinking and you're clubbing and you're going out with your friends every night, you will never be able and capable because your money is being wasted. Muslims are generally more charitable than others globally. And it's true because they have money because they don't waste it in the clubs and the pubs and they don't gamble it they're not supposed to you see what does islam want you to do be disciplined you'll have more money than others do you know why you don't even smoke cigarettes those who smoke may allah forgive you and may allah strengthen you to quit the habit when i see the faces here you see a smoker you can tell from a mile that this man is a smoker and from half a mile you can smell that he's a smoker I always feel sorry for the wives of those who smoke. When you get married, you will know why. May Allah forgive us. It's a powerful word of encouragement. Do you know how much money is wasted, Wallahi? A packet, two packets, three a day. How much is it in shillings? How much is one packet? Who knows? They know, but they are scared to say because I will ask you, how do you know? Right? Say two to five dollars, whatever it might be. Imagine every single day, instead of doing sadaqah of five dollars, you are burning five dollars. You can get your jannah if you are a proper person, disciplined. It's not difficult to throw the bad habit out. Don't be sucked into bad habits. Today you have relatively good looking people. Mashallah, salah, they will be there. What else? Maybe they don't smoke, they don't club, they don't. But on the phone, they are busy sitting and watching something immoral. They are watching pornography. One, four. When they see something, they forward to their friend. You saw this. Astaghfirullah. When the Quran, the Hadith warns you about things and tells you, you want to send a, something to someone, make sure it's a good example. Because when you die, you continue to get a reward for the good that you promoted with others. And you will also continue to get a sin if you promoted sinful things. So remember this. Nuh alayhi salam lived with his people for 950 years calling them towards Allah. His own son did not accept the message. He tried with his people. They, you see when you talk to a young person sometimes and you tell them be disciplined. Get up for fajr. Come to the prayer. No, but I'm at work. It's hard to pray. People say that. Make a plan. Make a plan. They say, but it's hard to pray. It will take you two to five minutes. Make a plan. Somehow. Someone will say, but I'm at school. Someone will say, but I'm at university. Someone will say, but I am this. But is only an excuse. So Nuh alayhi salam says, Oh Allah, I called my people. قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي دَعَوْتُ قَوْمِي لَيْلًا وَنَهَارًا Oh Allah, I called my people by night and I called them during the day. Which means in our language 24-7 I was telling people, please worship Allah alone. Leave your bad ways, leave your bad habits. Don't worship things besides Allah. 24-7. What happened? فَلَمْ يَزِدْهُمْ دُعَائِي إِلَّا فِرَارًا He says, when I called them, they went further away. You know, someone, you say, hey brother, come pray. You say, yeah, who are you? Then he walks out. It can happen. A guy drinking, you say, brother, drop the bottle. What do you mean? I'll bring another one. Who are you? You see that arrogance. Allah says, don't be arrogant. Don't be arrogant. Someone tells you, come to pray. Say, no problem. Give me a lift. Let's go together. MashaAllah. You become companions. Jazakallah khair for reminding me. Shukran for telling me. Someone is lighting the cigarette. They say, brother, I learned a good one from one of my colleagues. He says, if you want to know if something is good, you should be able to say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. When you start doing it, 
And when you are finished with it, you should be able to say Alhamdulillah. Then it's a good thing. I imagine you are lighting a cigarette. You want to put in your mouth, are you going to say Bismillah? You can't even say Bismillah because the minute you say Bismillah, it will drop from between your lips. It's on the floor. Imagine you take a puff. I'm astaghfirullah. I don't even want to say it. I don't even want to say it. I don't even want to say it. Can it be a good thing? Allah, imagine someone going to the club, they say, Bismillah, Bismillah, I'm entering. No, 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 not at all. Only you come to that which is good, you say, Bismillah. You want to know if what you are doing is good, you must be able to say, Bismillah, when you are starting, and when you are done with it, you must say, Alhamdulillah. Then you know you have done something good. See? So, Nuh alayhi salam says, every time I called them, they ran further away. 950 years, very few people listened to what I had to say. Yet, he was a Nabi of Allah. And Allah was watching. Allah gives time to everyone. Allah gives you time, me time. May Allah forgive me. May Allah forgive you and all of us. May Allah strengthen us to fulfill what we are supposed to. Allahumma habib ilayna al-iman. Oh Allah, make beloved to us iman. Make it beloved to us. Make it nice, good in my heart. Zayinhu fi qulubina, beautify iman in my heart. Make it beautiful. So when something to do with iman, something to do with the deen of Allah, it's beautiful. Today we heard there's going to be a lecture in Parklands. Everyone is here. That is a good sign by the will of Allah. If I call you towards anything besides Allah, throw me out of the masjid. But I'm calling you towards Allah. That's why we are here. And I'm telling you, my beloved brothers and sisters, that dua where we should be saying, Oh Allah, beautify iman in our hearts. Karrih ilayna al-kufra wal-fusuqa wal-isyan. Oh Allah, make detested for us disbelief and sin and that which is in transgression of your command. Make it unpleasant. Make it Tested to us. It's a dua. So when something haram has to be done, a true believer just walks away. Even if shaitan says, ah, just do it, no one is watching. Say, Allah is watching. No one is watching. Allah is watching. Shaitan will come, isn't it? Say, don't worry, no one is watching. Shaitan does this. Oh, it's a big opportunity. I'm going to make a million. Million. From what? Stealing from that guy? Can't happen. It's a million or a billion or a trillion. No, it's not happening. You know why? Because Allah will not give you blessings in that money. Allah won't give you blessings and barakah. Ask Allah and work hard. So Nuh alayhi salam, he then says to his people, Istaghfiru rabbakum, seek the forgiveness of Allah. Now one might ask why? You know, the young people, sometimes they are inquisitive. So they ask you a question. You are telling me to seek the forgiveness of Allah. What is in it for me? Isn't it? What can I get? Will I suddenly get things? The answer is, yes, you will. Yes. Istighfar. To seek the forgiveness of Allah, do you know what it will do for you? Number one, Allah will forgive you. قُلْ تُسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا Indeed, Allah is most forgiving. يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدَرَارًا He will send rain from the skies in abundance, in the correct measure. You know, rain is so tricky because more of it is a problem just like less of it is a problem. You need the right amount. You have more rain, there's going to be flooding. May Allah protect us. You have less rain, there's going to be drought. May Allah protect us. You need the right amount. What should you do? Seek the forgiveness of Allah. Allah will give you beneficial rain. Four things. Allah says, He will grant you wealth. Amwal. When you seek the forgiveness of Allah, how will you get money? I show you how you get money. Who owns the whole world? Allah. 
who made you and I this afternoon in Jumu'ah, I said, nobody from amongst us is here by his choice. No one is on earth by his or her choice. You were placed here, you were put here. Did you decide, oh Allah, send me to the earth? Anyone? Did anyone say, I want to be on the earth? That's why you came here? No, think about that all the time. You are here because someone put you here. Wallahi. The same someone who put you here is going to decide, it's enough, let's go back. Am I right? Allahu Akbar. So Allah says, I own everything. You want? Come knock on my door. I will give you. Who owns the sustenance that you want? Oh Allah. Young people say, oh Allah, make me rich straight away. Do you remember there was a clip of a Nigerian brother outside the Kaaba? What was he saying? Fulus, fulus. Do you know what happened to that brother? Wallahi, he is one of the rich guys. Did you follow that? Follow. Go check it. Go online. You can Google it. What happened to the brother? They call him Akhi. As soon as they see him, they say, Fulus, Fulus. Instead of Salaamu Alaikum, he was complaining. When people see me, they say, Fulus, Fulus. They forget to say, Salaamu Alaikum. Because on social media, you get to be known with certain things. But the brother became wealthy. Then I found out that actually that clip is only a small portion of his dua. The full dua, he started off by saying, Oh Allah, forgive us. Oh Allah, grant us the ability to worship you. Oh Allah, grant us this and that. And he was asking Allah's forgiveness and mercy and Jannah and everything. And someone loved the dua and was listening to this guy crying to Allah. And he, he turned the camera and he started videoing it. By the time the video started, he was already nearly at the end of the dua. So after he asked all for forgiveness and for Jannah and for good wife and good children and so on, then he started asking for, for Fulus. So then when he says Fulus, Fulus, what happened? You and I, when you see the clip, what do you think? You think negative that, ah, this guy is only asking for Fulus. But later on he said, Wallahi, that's not true. They ask Allah for everything, but these guys only recorded. That's why be careful online when you see a clip of anyone. Don't believe that that's the whole story. Sometimes there's a big story that you don't know. It's a very important piece of advice. Social media, we are living in the age. That man became wealthy. If you go to his accounts on social media, he's showing you. He drives the latest BMW and mashallah, he moves and cruises. I don't even want to tell you how big his family is because someone might be offended because they don't even have a wife. <laughs> May Allah grant us ease. May Allah grant us goodness. My beloved brothers and sisters, Allah is the owner. You ask him, you knock his door. You read, you fulfill your prayers. What he told you to do, you stay away from what he told you to stay away from. And you work hard. And if you fall, you seek his forgiveness. Allah will open the doors for you. Allah will give you. And you make an intention, oh Allah, give me so that I can do good with it. You all want millions and billions. In shillings, maybe trillions. Right? We all want big figures. But what is the intention? The intention should be that, oh Allah, give me so that I can spend on who? On the widows, on the orphans, on the masakin, on my family who don't have, on other people. I want to build a masjid. I want to do this. I want to bring the ummah together. I want to pay hospital bills for those who cannot pay. I want to help those who cannot get married to get married. I want to assist those who are struggling and suffering to pay rent and whatever else. Wallahi, if your heart is clear, Allah will give you. Allah will give you. Then when Allah gives you, spend. Don't change your mind. Many people pledge. You know, pledge like today, for example, there is something called orphan. What is it? What? It's called embrace an orphan. You pay so many shillings and you, you look after the orphan. I think young Muslims is doing the project. They spoke to me about it today. People pledge, I'll look after 10 orphans. So everyone thinks, okay, that's 10. When it, com when it comes time to give the money, some people say, I changed my mind. What? I changed my mind. But my brother, you made such a big scene of the whole thing. You changed your mind. It was Allah rejecting your money. He doesn't want it. That's what it is. 
You know, those orphans, do you really think they are going to die without you? Wallahi, someone else will spend money on them. Allah chooses whom he wants to give money to a certain cause. In this masjid, for example, if Allah wants, he will use your money here. If he doesn't want, he won't use your money. You might think, I don't want to give, but you don't know that it's Allah who doesn't want it. Allah owns everything. Allah owns you and everything you own. Allah owns all of that. So when a person pledges something, they should follow it up. Don't just say, I changed my mind. Because when you promise Allah, follow that promise. Follow it. That's why they say, you know what is another in the Arabic language? It means to make a vow. Some people, they say, oh Allah, if I pass my exams, I will fast for 60 days. Why are you making it so hard on yourself? Oh Allah, if I pass my exams, I will fast for 60 days. The hadith says, you know what that means? If you wanted to do the deed, you could do it without making a vow to Allah. Because Allah does not need, Allah does not need your deed. You need it. It's like going to a wealthy man and telling him, here's a sweet. You're going to a wealthy man who has a fleet of the latest cullinans. Rolls Royce, and you say, I want to do good. I'll give you a sweet, but first come here. Who are you talking to? The guy will tell you, by the way, the sweet you have, I own the factory. How's that? I own the factory. So if you are telling Allah, oh Allah, make me pass, I will do two months for you. Allah says, hey, hey, hey. You understand how bad it is? But if you did promise, fulfill the promise. So it is makru to make such a promise. But if you did promise, you have to fulfill it because then you are in trouble. You follow what I'm saying? It's the proper ruling. You can ask the scholars, they will tell you. It is better to do it the other way around to say, Oh Allah, Oh Allah, I fasted for the whole month of Ramadan. I ask you to help me so that I pass my exam. Now you are talking. You already did it, it's past tense. Oh Allah, I read the entire Quran only for your sake between you and I. Help me to pass my exam. Now you are talking. Why? It's past tense. I'm not promising tit for tat. Allah doesn't need you. You follow what we are saying. It's only extracting the deed from a person who is miserly. You are miserly. You don't want to do the deed. So you're saying, give me, I give you. Allah says, what do you mean? Give me, I give you. I am making your heart beat 136,000 times a day. You didn't even pay me for that. Subhanallah. And you want to tell me, give me, I give you. Oh, Akbar. Nonetheless, going back, we were talking about pledging and fulfilling the pledge. So, Allah says, when you seek forgiveness, we will grant you wealth. And we will grant you offspring. Offspring. Sometimes people don't have children. I tell you a few things. The way we eat nowadays from a young age messes up our reproductive system in many cases. And the cases are increasing. So sometimes you find a person is married two, three, five years. One of the things you need to do is clean the way you eat and what you eat. Cut out that which is unhealthy. Start eating healthy for one whole year proper and ask Allah and call out to Allah inshallah he will give you he will give you sometimes it's very simple you need to clean what you eat we are eating too many modified foods we are eating too much too many sweet things too many unhealthy things and we just don't even think about what we are eating and we don't realize it messes your reproductive system may Allah protect us but with that you need to make sure that you seek the forgiveness of Allah. When you seek the forgiveness of Allah, do you know how he will give you? He owns it. He owns it, so he will give you. When you are a friend of a person who's extremely wealthy, very close friend, when he sees you are in need, do you think he's going to wait for you to ask him? He'll say, you are my friend. Are you, are you not my friend? You are my friend. Here is a Rolls Royce. Ah, I, I don't know about those friends, but yeah, they could be. You are my friend. Here is the motor vehicle. Keep it. Take it. Motor vehicle, maybe Toyota they will give. Allahu alam. 
Some car they might, some people, depending on how close you are to them and what you have done and how the relation is, don't you think the owner of entire creation, when you are close to him, he will say, oh my worshiper, I am giving you more than you want. You asked me for a million, I'm giving you a billion. The owner of the entire creation, he will do it for you. That is Allah. Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. So build your relation with Allah. Seek forgiveness from him and you see what will happen. Then Nuh alayhi salam, after he explained to his people that look, when you seek the forgiveness of Allah and turn to him, he will grant you beneficial rain. When you have beneficial rain, what will happen? Your crops will grow. The economy will boom. So many things will come right. Everything comes alive. You are happy. The rivers are flowing. What else? Allah grants you gardens, both in this world and in the next. He will give you gardens. And above that, Allah Almighty will grant you the success of the hereafter completely. If I die now, or if you die now, where will we go? We go back to whoever put us here in the first place. Surely I need to have some hope that I'm going to a good place. What is the hope? The hope is that in my life, I never ever rendered an act of worship for anyone besides Allah. I did not put my head on the ground except for Allah. That's the hope I have. And I seek the forgiveness of Allah. I know inshallah, I'm going into the mercy of Allah. Someone passes away as a Muslim. There is a, there is a, a beautiful prayer that comes after their name all the time. Say for example, brother Abdullah passed away. Whenever you talk of him after he passed away, you say, you know, brother Abdullah, Allah yarhamu, he was a good man. What did you say? Allah, Allah yarhamu, may Allah have mercy on him. That's a dua you made. Because you were a good person. Someone made for you that dua. Or you made that dua for Abdullah. Because he was a good man. When you go to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will grant you the goodness. You know, the son, Nuh alayhi salam, was told at one stage, That was very serious. Allah says, Oh Nuh, nobody now is going to accept your message anymore. No new believers, no more. Whoever came, they came. Now, no one is going to come. Imagine Allah says, لَن يؤمن من قومك إلا من قد آمن. Now, no new people are going to come in. Only those who have accepted, they are already believers. As for the others, now you can stop calling them. And don't worry. But we want you to build an ark. وَصْنَا الْفُلْكَ Allah says, build an ark. Where? The middle of the city. You know, if you go to Mombasa, for example, you find them building boats. The bigger the boat, the closer to the water they build it. Because it's hard to move a whole ship from the middle of the city all the way to the water. I'd rather build it right near the water and we'll drop it into the water. And we go. Huge ships. They have the building factories right next to the water. But Nuh alayhi salam was told to put it in the middle of the city. And he was, he was told to build it massive. People began to laugh. They said, oh Nuh, you used to be a prophet. You stopped calling us. Now you are a carpenter. Now you are a carpenter. Wallahi, they were fools. They didn't see the miracle. Do you know what was the miracle? Listen to this. Allah allowed trees to grow very fast. As the tree grew, they chopped the tree, Nuh alayhi salam and a few people, they brought it down and it fitted like a jigsaw with the previous tree. And the next tree fitted like a jigsaw with that tree as though it was cut in a factory. That was a miracle. They are watching, they are seeing, but too late. Now they are laughing. Allah says it's not going to help. But there was one sad thing. In fact, two sad things. The wife of Nuh alayhi salam refused to accept the message. The son of Nuh alayhi salam refused to accept the message. He knew they were not going to accept the message because Allah said no one knew is going to come in. He was sad. Still he tried with his son because it started raining 
and it was not ordinary rain. The water was gushing from underneath as well. You see, they say the water table was rising. So it burst. So water came from underneath and from the top and from the sides and from everywhere. There was water. When that water came, Nuh alayhi salam called his son. He says, oh my son, what is this? What was he doing? He was offering his son enlightenment. Loud echo. Enlightenment. He's telling him, Oh my son, come. Oh my son, come into the ship with us. Oh my son, come into the ship with us so that you don't drown. Subhanallah. Ya bunay yarkam ma'ana wa la takum ma'al kafirin oh my son noah is telling his son oh my son come and ride with us come and don't be from the disbelievers Noah alayhi salam actually took in with him animals and species by the instruction of allah they were wondering what's going on but they kept laughing they did not take the message seriously you know what the son replied? قَالَ سَآوِي إِلَىٰ جَبَلٍ يَعْصِمُنِي مِنَ الْمَاءِ I am going to climb at the top of the mountain. I'll do mountain climbing. I'll be hiking up. I'll go to the top of the mountain. It will save me from the water. What's the big deal? Every time water comes, we can go to a high area and there won't be any water in the high area. Nuh alayhi salam looked at his son and says, you know what? لا عاصم اليوم من أمن الله إلا من رحم. Nobody is going to be saved from the command of Allah on this day except the one whom Allah has mercy on. And suddenly, what happened? A massive wave came between them, and that young fellow drowned. He neither listened to his father nor did he develop a relationship with Allah. Nor did he understand himself that I need help today. He didn't understand any of that. So when the wave came, he drowned. Up to this day, the echo of Nuh alayhi salam's words remains with us in the Quran. Allah mentions it not so that you can say nice story, but you ask yourself how many times have people reminded you and I to do good and to quit the bad because it will, there will be a day when it will be too late, but we don't listen to the echoes and we don't want that enlightenment. Am I right or wrong? Wallahi, people remind my brother, change your way. My brother, stop this. You know salah, your friends died. Someone else passed away. Someone else failed. Someone else is unwell. But we don't learn the lesson. Why? Because we, we, we didn't want to. However, when the ummah is struggling, one good thing that comes out of it is that people come together and they find the masjid again. Do you not agree the issue that has faced the ummah in Gaza has brought us together and has made us reconsider our relationship with Allah in a positive way. Don't you agree? Today people are more serious about their deen and their faith. Do you know why? They are watching their brothers and sisters be persecuted exactly as was described by Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we became stronger. And there are non-Muslims studying the Quran. Non-Muslims. And they are entering the fold of Islam. And you and I who are born Muslims in the case of a lot of us or most of us, we are inshallah beginning to take our deen a little bit more seriously. Would you not agree? So I want to encourage you, my brothers, my sisters, let's not give up. Keep that movement going and Allah will grant you success. Keep it going and Allah will grant you goodness. Keep moving closer and closer to Allah. Don't ever go backwards. You quit a bad habit, don't go back. You stopped watching pornography, don't go back. It's, it, it won't help you. It won't help you. My beloved fathers here, this is a random piece of advice. If you have daughters or sons, as they get to the age of marriage, make it a little bit easy for them to get married. 
Is that a good piece of advice? Is that a good piece of advice? That yes was loud enough. I'm seeing all young people. I thought you would have said yes before I finished my sentence. My beloved fathers, if you have sons and daughters of marriage age, I call upon you from this pulpit to say, make it easier for them to get married. Don't make it tough. We need them to get married young age. If it means you help them, help them. If it means you need to assist them, assist. Make it easy. The ummah needs people who are free from sin. We are living in a hypersexual age. If you are not going to facilitate for the young to marry, they will end up doing haram and we will regret. There's no point for me to deny that young kids, six, seven years old, know what I'm talking about. Wallahi. Don't be a fool to think, no, they don't. They know more than you. Look, some of the young boys are smiling at me because they know what I'm talking. May Allah forgive us. I met a young guy, 11 years old. He says, am I allowed to do nikah to protect myself from haram? I told him, hey, bear sabr, man. Come on, sabr. Even your father won't be able to help. I cannot help. He said, you know what? But I need to save myself from haram. Allah made it easy. Why are you making it hard? Hey, first you have to bear sabr. The Prophet ﷺ says, وَمَن لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَعَلَيْهِ بِالصَّوْمْ if you cannot, you must fast. Fast every day. Young boy, 11 years old. All the energy. He's thinking, I need to get married. Wallahi, thank Allah. At least he is thinking to marry the opposite sex. Thank Allah. We will guide him, but he's heading in the right direction. Few more years and we can tell him, Bismillah. Yalla, let's go. Right? MashaAllah. May Allah make it easy for all our children. So, if we are going to facilitate halal as an ummah, we will be able to protect our children from haram. And if we make halal difficult, we will be encouraging our children to do haram. Follow what I'm saying. So it's my, our duty to care for the needs of the ummah. Yes, we will protect our daughters and our sons. So we won't allow them to just get married to any old person who might have conned them. Yet they have bad habits and bad characteristics that are known. Because the hadith tells you as a wali and a guardian, you need to look at the one who wants to marry your daughter. Do you have deen? Do you have akhlaq? Are you a responsible person? Yes. If my daughter also wants to marry you, Bismillah, I will not be an obstacle. Because you have the characteristics. You are ready. When are you ready? When you have responsibility, you have deen, you have akhlaq. Your, your connection with Allah is good and you know how to talk to people and you have good character, good conduct, good morals and good values. You are ready to get married by the will of Allah. The other day, one brother was asking me a question. He said, if a woman asks for 50,000 US dollars for mahar, is it a red flag or a green flag? Have you seen that? What did I say? I said it's a red flag. Why did I say it's a red flag? 50,000 US. My son is 22. You start him off on a debt. His mentality will be that of a person who's already in debt of 50K. Do you expect him to succeed as a man and come out and earn and say, wow, I'm going to provide for my family? Or he's already with a negative mindset from day one. I need to marry you, but you know what? I'm in debt. Write it, minus 50. I started my life, minus 50. Can't you help me? Your own father, I'm talking of the one who's asking for 50,000 US as mahar. Your own father only got the first 50,000 when he was 60 years old. So let's wait. Wait for what? When you are old with a walking stick, I'll come with the 50,000. Here's the 50,000. Ah, let's get married. Mashallah, we do our nikah. You, you have to walk with a walking stick. How will you get married? Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us ease. It's not haram. You can. If there's wealthy families sometimes. But to say that I will demand from you something you don't have. All the boys out here, I think 99% of them, they will not afford 50,000 at this age. Am I right or wrong? Hey, they are answering. Zakallah khair. Now we have started our lecture, guys. Now we started.
Imagine telling you 50, if someone says, look, inshallah, I, I, we will honor each other. It's not a sale. I'm not selling my daughter. When the guy thinks he paid for your daughter, he will abuse her. He will say, look, I paid. Come here. Sit down. Say, but I don't want to. I paid. Sit down. That's not how it is. That's not Islam. There is honor, dignity. I told you it's not haram, but it is definitely a red flag. Because some people were saying, no, Sheikh, how can you, how can you make haram what Allah made? I didn't say haram. I said red flag. Red flag means it's something you need to be wary of. Be careful. If it is a business deal from day one, you're putting me in debt and I haven't even started my life. Imagine what will happen. We will walk in the mall. We will walk in the mall with one problem. There is a niqab, but the eyes are looking. There is a designer watch. Can you see that? I can't see. Why? I can't. You can see everything you're pretending like you can't see. Because you know, if I walk into the mall, another 50k. Mahar was 50, there's another 50. What else? You want to buy a car? I know someone who said that if you marry my daughter, and this is a true story, it happened a few years ago, you are not allowed to drive a vehicle unless it is German. Unless, I mean, have you ever heard that? That if I ask you, is that a red flag, flag or a green flag? You know what I will tell you? That is not even a flag. Not even a flag. You cannot even bring the flag up. I don't even want to talk. Subhanallah, you are wasting the flags. German car. I will bring one of those old VWs from long back and I will come. And say, that's the German vehicle. Subhanallah. May Allah forgive us. We ask for ridiculous things. That's why I say, when you make the halal difficult, you know what happens? The children become very, very despondent and then they, look for, they don't look forward to getting married. I met a brother 35 years old. With all due respect, may Allah make it easy for you to marry. I told him, are you married? He said, no. I said, why? He cracked a joke. He said, inshallah, when I marry, I'll marry all four one time. I said, be careful what you say. Be careful what you say. And he came up with another idea. And obviously, this is banter that sometimes people actually just have while they are chit-chatting with the boys. He says, I learned a trick. What's the trick? I will marry my second wife before I marry my first wife. How? He says, because if you want to marry a second wife, they will never let you. So I rather marry the second one first and then the first one. So I said, but how? He says, you know how? When I want to get married, I'll say, you know, everything is okay. Even maybe I can give you that 50k, but you are my second wife. Oh, so who is your first one? Don't worry about her. She's not an obstacle. You won't see her. It's okay. One day when she's ready to see you, we'll see. For now, there's no, don't worry. It's okay. You know, you are my second wife. So he marries. He says, when I marry, what will happen? After a few years, when I find another woman, I said, you, I, I will marry you. And the nikah happens. And then he tells his wife who he married first who was told she was the second. Remember one day I told you that I have another wife. Say, yes, let me introduce you to her. I told him, my brother, that's the reason why you are not married. Because these thoughts, they, they, they are from shaitan. These thoughts are from shaitan. You are planning, planning. Someone might say, why do you want to marry your second wife before the first one? Marry the fourth one first. So at least you can say there are other three. They won't disturb you. Why do you want to start at two? Start at four. These thoughts are from shaitan, wallahi. Those who sit and think like this, they become 30, 35, 40, 45. They are not yet married because they are saying, inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. And don't worry, I'll show you guys what I will do. You are doing nothing and you will do nothing. Say bismillah. Don't set the bar so high that there are no such people. One day, there was a sister who sent me an email. She says, I'm looking for a husband. You come across so many young men. Please, if you come across someone with these qualities, let me know. So I said, okay, now I'm reading. He must be handsome. He must be tall. He must have beautiful hair. He must have nice eye. He must be a five times salah, get up for tahajjud. He must be a wealthy man and he must really be very clean and smart and he must be intelligent. He must have a degree. I replied back, inshallah, you will meet him in Jannah. <laughs> what do you want me to say? You will meet him in Jannah. That man does not exist. He's not there. <laughs> you, 
You have to compromise some things. Which things are you going to compromise? You look, sometimes there are two. Ask yourself, what can I live without? Can I give you a beautiful example? They ask me, you have been to many countries. Which is the best country? So I used to say this country, that country. Then I realized the answer is wrong. Listen to the true answer. Which country do you think is the best country? I knew you would say Kenya. La ilaha illallah. Say it again. Nigeria. Mashallah. Where are you from? Where are you from? Kenya. You better not show your face on the camera. Okay. Let me tell you what is the answer. Every country Allah has blessed it with something and taken away something from it without exception. There is no country that has the full package. Not one. So in Kenya you will have some amazing things that they don't have in Europe. But they will have some things that you also don't have. Do you agree? And it's amazing how every country is the same. That they have some things that others don't have. And they don't have some things that others have. That's Allah's way. When you go somewhere, you realize, Wallahi, Allah has blessed them. What did you notice? Something. I went to a very beautiful country. I don't want to say the name because I'm saying something negative. The weather, it was beautiful, superb, amazing. Really, like as if you are in a piece of something out of this world. But the weather was hot and humid. So hot and so humid. I had to say, oh Allah, you have never created perfection except in Jannah. Allah has created perfection only for a few things. One is Jannah. And from amongst us, as humankind, perfection is for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Follow what we are saying. Otherwise, for you and I, Allah has kept perfection in Jannah. If we had everything here, it was not going to be worth our while to go to Jannah. In the same way, every human being, not one of us has the full package. If the guy is tall and handsome, maybe he's not so rich. If the guy is handsome and rich, maybe he's not intelligent. If the guy is handsome, rich and intelligent, maybe he doesn't pray. If the guy prays and is good in Quran and something, maybe he's not so handsome. There has to be something you are ready to compromise. What is it that you need to compromise? Ask yourself. But if you want all of that together, and you say, Inshallah, I will find. Allah will not let me down. Allah will never let you down. He will give you that in Jannah. He won't let you down. Because you are being unreasonable. You are here on earth. May Allah Almighty strengthen us. So, Nuh alayhi salam lost his son. And he was saddened. And Allah says, no, don't be sad. Allah says, he was distanced from us, so you don't count him as a member of your family. He's lost. Do we want to be lost? May Allah strengthen all of us. May Allah grant us goodness. I mentioned a few of the pointers regarding the story of Nuh alayhi salam, and I brought into my talk this evening some issues of the reality around us and how we can improve as young boys and girls, young men and women. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, life is too short. We need to come closer to Allah, come to the masjid, no matter what. And when others come to the masjid, make them feel happy and encourage them and make them feel welcome. The house of Allah. You came here, Masha, Salamu Alaikum, how are you my brother? And we come and we sit together and we pray together and we will walk out and we are happy. And if I don't see you in some prayers, I can say, my brother, where were you today? I didn't see you. Not because I'm a security guard, but because I just want to ask you, are you okay? Everything well? Alhamdulillah. That is Allah. And that's the favor of Allah. May Allah Almighty bless all of us and grant us goodness. I want to thank all of you for coming in so early, for being so patient, for sitting. Some of you out there, the sisters perhaps who are at the back, may Allah Almighty bless all of you and grant you goodness. Whatever difficulty you have in your life, May Allah alleviate that struggle. 
And we pray for the Ummah, our brothers and sisters, not only in Gaza, but all over the world. Look at Sudan, look at so many places where so much of trouble is happening. We ask Allah to protect us. Wallahi, we need that togetherness. We need to connect with one another. And we, we definitely need to care for each other. I was speaking moments ago about this caring for an orphan. Inshallah, that project, they may announce it. If you can, be of assistance. Take one orphan. Myself and the one who takes care of an orphan will be like this in paradise. Take care of an orphan. Allah will open your doors. When you spend, the hadith says, Allah Almighty, hadith Qudsi, he says, spend, O son of Adam, I will spend on you. You want, give and see. Whenever I have given, I got more. I promise you, Wallahi. Whenever I have given, I got more. That doesn't mean go home and take everything and put it out and say, now Sheikh said, I'm getting more, let me wait. But you give where there is a need and you know you can give because shaitan, he makes you miserly, miserly. Give you one last example before I close. There was a brother who told me that when I was young, I started earning and I said, I'm going to spend when I get. When I got the first thousand, I said, wait, wait, let me earn a little bit more than I will spend. I got 10,000. I said, hang on, I want to make an investment. I will get and spend. He said, I made an investment, started getting income. I said, wait, wait, I need to get 100,000 and then I will buy a small property. He said, I waited until I got 100,000, bought a property. I said, you know what? Let me let the rental collect and I want to buy three, four properties. He said, then I realized I haven't even spent in the cause of Allah. See, in the process, you must start spending. Don't say, wait, hang on, let me do more. No, wait, hang on, let me do more. While you are earning, you are also spending something for the cause of Allah. And Allah will give you lots and lots of goodness. May Allah Almighty bless all of us. We want to continue, inshallah, tomorrow with the echoes of enlightenment by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in various other masajid here in Nairobi. I pray that Allah grant us acceptance and I pray that Allah gather us in Jannatul Firdaus. I pray that Allah give us Jannatul Firdaus without reckoning through his mercy, may he grant us the companionship of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jazakumullahu khaira wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullahu khaira al mufti. Inshallah we will... Inshallah, we will pray our Isha right away. Uh, we request brothers to kindly remain seated. The Adhan takes place, and then Isha after that. We request uh, brothers and sisters to kindly cooperate with our volunteers. Kindly cooperate with volunteers to guide you on how to exit. Don't rush, don't clog the exit ways so that we can have a seamless exit. In the spirit of everyone's safety, we request you to cooperate with the volunteers. We kindly request you to cooperate with the volunteers while exiting. Inshallah, let's kindly wait for the Adhan. And then we pray our Aisha. Kwa mahamri kaimati chapati laini na mapishi yote uyapendayo ya kuburudisha na yenye ladha nzuri tumia nyota mafuta ya nyota kuboresha afya yako na utaipenda Hana huwa taala tunapokutana tena penzo tazamaji katika kipindi chenu mkipendacho cha ukumbi wa fiqhi kipindi ambacho kinakuelimisha kinakukumbusha kinakuhimiza kufanya mambo ya khairi na kinakutahadharisha kutokana na yale ambayo Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ameyakataza mimi ni mfanyikazi wa msikiti na mimi ni mzazi ili kujifunza malezi bora ya watoto wangu Mimi hutazama MTV.
I'm a researcher. To level up my knowledge in Islam, I watch Ilm TV. I'm a school principal, and for the best materials for my learners, I watch Ilm TV. Mimi ndere watasi. Mina makastomas wangu watch Ilm TV. I'm a student to improve my learning. I watch Elm TV. Watch. 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 Watch Elm TV. Today I shall be reading the story of the Prophet Adam alayhi salam. The Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Story of Prophet Nuh. Habib loved Allah very much. He always had fear of Allah in his heart. He slammed to stay home. The moral of this story is when someone says no to you, it's not the end of the world, right? She loves Allah. <laughs> The mountains love Allah, the sun loves Allah, and the stars love Allah. I love Allah. <laughs> My name is Kibet and this is my hustle. There are three most important factors in, in fast food. Number one is location, number two is location, number three is location. Msikai home. Namjakata mikono, namjakata mungu. Mwenyezi Mungu ndo anapenda risk. No matter how small it. Ni yeye tu peke yake tutakufungulia njia. Ndio uzuri ya kuwa na imani na kuwa Muislamu. Wewe unaga wasiwasi na risk. Hata wakivunja ama nyinyi fanyike, Mr. Jali Mungu ndo arazak. Na ndo khairu raziqin. Nile nyi fadila na furaha nyoyoni. Vijana walo We're learning the Arabic alphabet so we can read and learn al -Quran. We welcome you, inshallah, to these classes where we are going to be learning the Arabic language. We learn this Arabic language because it is the language which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the final revelation. The Prophet was communicated to in Arabic, so we need to understand him to get his message. And that is why it's so important for anyone who wants a communication with his creator to learn the Arabic Experience the freedom of flying with Freedom Airlines. Freedom Airlines, expand your horizons. Dawa 
mtaani ni kipindi ambacho kitaangazia yanayojiri mtaani kupitia dawa ya Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Tutaka kujua exactly how is it to raise a child? Vijana wetu wengi wamepotelea kula mkoka, pombe, hawakukaribu sana na dini. Mtu anaona ni kama umekuja kujificha kwa dini. Mtu anaona ni kama umekuja na interest fulani. Insha Allah tutaangalia miradi mbalimbali za kina mama pamoja na vijana. Vijana wanaopatwa mawaidha na ustad kubwa. Sasa ukiona mkijana mwenzako amereform, ule mwingine pia anaanza kukopi ile style. Tuyaangalie jinsi dawa imeweza kubadilisha maisha ya wakaaji insha Allah. Kuanza kuvuta bangi ilikuwa ni pia pressure. Huyu akivuta anasema hawezi kana sisi kama hauvuti. So yeye alibidi yashike ule msengeta and me nilikuwa ni ni toilet watch. On that day tulichukua watch kama mbili. Nasikia odi. Karibu. Nini? Tumetumwa. Nini? Nyama. Alhamdulillah leteni tunashukuru. Zamani ilikuwa ni experience mbaya. Ungana nami mwalimu wenu Ustada Aisha Muhammad Abdul Khair tuangalie jinsi ilivyobadilisha dawa Nairobi. Alhamdulillah watazamaji wetu tabia ambayo kwamba tulizungumzia leo ni tabia ya baadhi yetu kuwa na kibri na kutoa heshima wale ambao kwamba wanafanya zile kazi ambazo kwamba wanafanya Umeenda katika sehemu wapata mtu yafagia, mtu ameosha amepiga mop. Bahati mbaya viatu zako zina matope. Wewe uende wapitishe juu yake. Wengine pamefagilio ni pasafi anakula pengine ni sweet ama amekula kitu fulani, anachukua ule uchafu anautupa pale pale chini. Na wallahi wengine wana kibiru ukimuuliza wakwambia, nisipotupa, je huyu mfanyikazi atafanya kazi gani? Kibiru ndugu zangu Wengine katika magari shekhe umekunywa juisi umekunywa maji umekula ndizi kule kule barabarani shekhe Kuna vitu zingine tusiongojage kuaibishwa katika mitandao ya kijamii Lazima gari ke wote ndio imeko la hasha kuwa na utu humanity kuwa katika hali ambayo kwamba ni nzuri watupa uchafu barabarani pengine mtu wafagia na wengine tuwafagia sehemu zetu uchafu uenda umampelekea jirani yako ama wengine tuwakuta mtu mfanyikazi alikuwa akipiga plasta Sheikh ampiga plasta wewe waje wapitisha miguu juu Sheikh waharibu kitu ya hisi tabia zetu ndugu zangu kuna hishma tusiwadharao wale tuwaona ni dhalili Sheikh mimi najaribu kutoa mfano mkubwa wale baadhi ya watu tuwaona ni watu wanadharaulika wana hishma kubwa mbele ya Uislamu kuna nyanya ama mama alikuwa akifagia msikiti wa Mtume sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yeye alikuwa akifagia. Huyu mama akaja akafa. Baada ya kufa maswahaba wakamzika, baada ya siku mbili tatu Mtume sallallahu alaihi wasallam akauliza yule mama usafi simuoni yuko wapi? Maswahaba kwaambia Rasulullah mama alikufa. Mtume akakasirika akakwambia, "Kwa nini hamkuniambia tukamswalie na tumzike?" wakasema ya Rasulullah tuliona ulikuwa unapumzika tutaki kukusumbua bi maana maswahaba waliona huni mtu akufagia sasa tutakusumbuaje mtume kiumbe, kiumbe bora mtume sallallahu alaihi wasallam alienda kwa kaburi ya yule mama akamswalia na akamwombea dua ndugu zangu islam kuna baadhi yetu tuona watu wa kufagia msikiti watu wa kufagia choo watu wa kufagia barabarani watu wa kutoa sewage tunawafanya ni useless tunawaona ni watu ambao kwamba hawana na ndugu yangu usisahau sheikh Usisahau kitu kimoja yule ambaye kwamba anafagia hiyo sewage anafagia choo anafungua sewage kuna wale ambao kwamba wanamwangalia riziki yake inatoka hapo ndugu zangu Islam kwa hivyo utu wetu sisi tuwaheshimu 
usiende uchafue mahali jirani yako maji ambayo kwamba inatoka toka chafu umedirect kwake mpaka mlangoni umemwanikia nguo mpaka mbele ya mlango wa nyumba anapotoka ni nguo zako ziko na wengine makuruu kabisa pengine ni nguo ya ndani wamwekea mbele ya mlango sheikh mtu atoka nje ona kichupi cha mtu mbele ya mlango wake pengine watoka na watoto wake kwa nyumba si heshima ndugu zangu si adab na si mafundisho yetu assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh previously on how to ashhad an la ilaha illallah wa ashhad anna muhammad rasulullah allahu ya rabbi ya allah allahu ya rabbi ya allah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh naam uh, karibuni katika uh, kipindi chetu kingine ambacho kwamba leo tunaangalia ibada ya swala katika Uislamu haswa kwa wale watu wapya ambao ndio wameingia katika dini na ndugu yangu ali ameingia katika dini na tungependa kumuonyesha namna ya kuswali kwa hivyo utafuatilia na sisi ili kwamba tupate kuelewa naam uh, ndugu yangu Lukman sasa kwanza ulikuwa unaitwa Elija lakini sasa hii unaitwa Lukman na Lukman wewe maadamu ushakuwa muislamu itahitajika ya kwamba uswali vile waislamu wanavyoswali eh? vile mtume wetu alivyoswali eh? Na kuswali uh-huh. kuna swala vipindi vitano. Uh-huh. Kipindi cha kwanza ni alfajiri ambao ni ndio tutakupatia demonstration yake. Tuna swala two units ya ya, ya, ya swala, yani raka mbili. Yeah. Then kuna kipindi ya dhuhuri ni units nne, four mm-hmm. units raka yes. nne. Yes. Then kipindi cha alasiri vile vile raka nne, then kipindi cha magharibi ni raka tatu, then kipindi cha aishai ama saa mbili usiku itakuwa mm-hmm. ni raka ngapi? Raka nne. Mm-hmm. So sahii nitakuonyesha raka mbili hizo mm-hmm. za fajiri. Sawa bwana. Mm-hmm. So kwanza nitakuonyesha tu kwa ishara what is to be done. Kwa hiyo ningependa uniangalie uone hiyo hiyo demonstration alafu tufanyaje? Alafu tu, uh, tuone. Kwa hivyo uh, yule 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 ambaye ni imam, yule ambaye ni imam atakuwa anaongoza watu. Yeah. Kwanza kuna mtu ambaye atakuwa na kimu swala. Atakuwa anasema Allahu akbar Allahu akbar ashhadu an la ilaha illallah ashhadu anna muhammad rasulullah hayya ala as-salah hayya ala al-falah qad qamat as-salat qad qamat as-salat Allahu akbar Allahu akbar la ilaha illallah akisha sema hivyo bi maana sasa watu ambao hata walikuwa miketi hapa wanasimama kila mmoja katika nafasi yake alafu anaanza kufuata ibada vile imam anavyofanya so imam atasimama vile nimesimama atasema Allahu akbar Alafu unaona mali mali anaweka mkono mm. hapa. Unaona? Atakuwa anaweka mkono hapa. Mm-hmm. Na sisi sote vile vile tutakuwa tunafanya hivyo. Unasema Allahu Akbar. Hii mikono yako unainua mpaka sehemu ya here. You see? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, unainua mpaka sehemu ya here mm-hmm. then unaileta hapa. Mkono wa kulia inalala juu ya mkono wa kushoto unaweka katika chest hapa. Unaniona? Mm-hmm. Then imam atakuwa anaongoza katika kusoma. Okay? Anasoma Quran. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. Arrahmanir Rahim. Maliki yawmiddin. Iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in. Ihdinas siratal mustaqim. Siratal ladhina an'amta 'alayhim. Ghayril maghdubi 'alayhim waladdallin. Akisa sema hiyo dallin then watu wote wanajibu akisema amin. Okay, alafu unarudi mnanyamaza tu. Ye tena anaanza kusoma, sawa? Fala uqsimu bimawaqin nujum wa innahu laqasamun law ta'lamuna azim. Innahu la Qur'anun karim fi kitabin maknun la yamassuhu illa almutahharun tanzilun min rabbil alamin Allahu akbar alafu anaenda hivi anashika um, uh, the knees anashika hapa magoti anainama hivi you have to be very comfortable ukiwa katika sehemu hiyo hivi mm-hmm. then anasema tena sami Allahu liman hamida ananyanyua mkono yake hapa mm-hmm. then anaziregesha chini mm-hmm. then ana, anasema tena Allahu akbar so we are going down hivi mm-hmm. magoti yako yanashika chini mkono yako inashika hapa mm-hmm. then paji lako la uso pamoja na mapua lako linaguza mm-hmm. chini mm-hmm. Allahu akbar Allahu Akbar unarudi unakaa hapa unalalia katika vizigini zako 
then anafanya tena Allahu Akbar Ukiwa katika hii sujud kuna maneno unasema hmm. ambao hiyo utafundishwa na utakuja kuelewa sawa so, then anaamrisha tena Allahu Akbar tunasimama Unarudi katika ile ile position hmm. hapa hmm. then anaendelea kusema kusoma Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Arrahmanir Rahim Malik Yawmiddin Iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in Ihdinas siratal mustaqim siratal ladhina an'amta 'alayhim ghayril maghdubi 'alayhim waladdallin Tunajibu Amin Kisha nasoma tena Ar-Rahman 'allama al-Qur'an khalaqa al-insan 'allamahu al-bayan الشمس والقمر بحسبان والنجم والشجر يسجدان الله اكبر unashika hapa tena vile tuliposhika na unameshwa kati yako na mwenzio umeshikanisha hivyo vizuri si patikane nafasi kisha atasema tena sami Allah liman hamida nanyanyua mkono alafu unayaregesha chini kisha ataamrisha tena Allahu akbar you go to that position evo Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allahu akbar so unakaa katika hii position maana uh-huh. kuna ni, ni station kivi yake eh? uh-huh. kuna maneno utakuwa unasema tutakufundisha na utayaelewa eh uh-huh. Allahu akbar سبحان ربي الاعلى سبحان ربي الاعلى سبحان ربي الاعلى الله اكبر سو كيو هابا تشيني ونسمى سبحان ربي الاعلى سبحان ربي الاعلى سبحان ربي الاعلى مره ثالثه ها ونحكيكيشا ميكونو ياكو يكو هابا اوكي يس نا اوسيو نانغاليا هوكو ولا هوكو يو كيو كاتيكا سوالا يكو هابا هابا ونانغاليا مالي ونسجوديا ها ذن ذا نيكست ستيب ني تشاهد تشاهد kuna maneno utasema tutakuandikia uta utayaelewa Nanyanyua kidole chako hivi Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Allahumma salli Aha tahiyatu تحيات لله وصلوات طيبة لله السلام عليك يا نبي الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا نبي الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد كيشه تكمليزه هيو وتكون نتوى سلام ولكن كوا كوانغاليا وباندي وا كوليا Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Alafu upande wa kishoto Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Alafu hapo swala imeisha Lakini nilikuwa na kuonyesha ni kiangali angali huku kwa sabu ni demonstration Tukisasi mama katika swala hakuna kuangalia huku wala huku Wala kuna kutema mate wala kuna kunywa maji Unangoja mpaka swala inakuisha ikisha kusha pap Mpaka ukisikia kuenda haja hakuna Hakuna kuenda haja hapo Uh-huh. Yaani kisha kwisha tu hivi ndio unatoka sasa unaenda chooni, uh-huh. unaenda kunywa maji, unaenda kula and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Okay? Uh-huh. Sasa hiyo in, in, in short uh-huh. ndio namna ya kuswali. Sasa hiyo tumeswali swala ya alfajiri. Uh-huh. Alfajiri yani uh-huh. ile asubuhi ile uh-huh. ni raka mbili. Uh-huh. So saa saba ama dhuhuri kuna raka nne. Tunafiga hizo mbili vile tumepiga uh-huh. kisha tunasimama tena. Tunapiga tena nyingine mbili tunakaa uh, tashahud. Uh-huh. Okay? alafu tunamaliza swala ikifika uh, magharibi saa 12 na nusu jioni mm. tunafanya tatu sasa tunafanya mbili tunakaa alafu tunasimama tunafanya moja tunakaa tunamaliza swala so hizi zote tutakupatia kitabu ambacho itakusaidia ku, kuelewa mm-hmm. na tutakuandikia utaielewa namna ya kusoma mm-hmm. namna ya ukiwa una swali peke yako utasema nini utasema vipi utasimama vipi okay Sasa. but this basically is the swala sawa 
So unaonaje unaweza kuifanya? Yeah. Ama ni ngumu sana. Ndafaya. Oh. Sawa sawa. Karibu sana katika Islam. Shukrani. So uh, kwa wale wenzetu ambao tulikuwa na ya kuruku. O oh, ya kuruku. Ndugu yetu anauliza, hii kuruku ni VP? Yaani una ruku katika level gani? Simama nikuonyeshe kuruku. So kuruku utakuwa unakuja hapa. Unaona mikono yako? Mm-hmm. Unakuja unaweka hapa. Then you bend your bend your back. Mm-hmm. Mpaka iko flat, okay? Yes. Mtu anaweza kuweka glass hapa ya maji na isianguke. So do, do, don't ruku hivi mm-hmm. like uh, unataka kukimbia. Mm-hmm. Don't ruku hivi like you know. So you just be at a level ambayo you are comfortable mm. na pia hapa iko flat that way. Na the gap between you are your, your two feet mm. ama your two legs isiwe kubwa sana na isiwe ndogo sana. Yeah. Wanawake ndio wanakubaliwa kusimama hivi. Lakini mwanaume unakuwa unakuwa na space nzuri. Mm. Not too big and not too, too small, small okay? okay? So that position. So this is what we call the ruku. Ruku bowing. Mm-hmm. Na ukiwa katika bowing yes. unasema subhana subhana rabbil azim. Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim. Okay? Yes. Mara tatu. Yes. Okay? Ametukuka Mwenyezi Mungu ambaye ndiyo ametukuka, yani ndiyo mkubwa kuliko yes. wote. Okay? Yes. So yes. unasema hiyo mara tatu then unasimama. Ukisimama yes. ni imama alikuwa ashaagiza asha akasema sami Allahu liman hamida. Mm-hmm. Wewe sasa unajibu ukisema Rabbana lakal hamd. Okay. Rabbana lakal hamdi. Rabbana lakal hamdi. Yaani Mola wetu wewe ndio unastahili kuhimidiwa. Sawa? Yeah. Then unaenda chini alafu unamalizia kuswali. Kuna swali lolote inakusumbua tena? Nashukuru kwa sawa sawa. Umemaliza? Yeah. So ni kuswali tu sasa. Ni kuswali tu. Karibu sana katika Uislamu ndugu yangu na ujisikie huko nyumbani. Shukran. Asalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ndugu zetu na dada zetu. Pahali popote mnapokuwa mnaitizama eh Ningependa kuwafahamisha haswa e, ndugu zetu wa Islamu ya kwamba usije ukamuona mtu na ukadharau kumpatia risala. Risala ni muhimu umpatie ndio kazi yetu. Mtume wetu sallallahu alaihi wasallam anasema bali wani wala aya. Nifikishieni angalau hata kama ni aya moja. Kwa hivyo usije ukaona mtu amesimama tu kama vile ndugu yetu alipokuwa amesimama kule tunamuona naona kama anafadhaika kumbe ni mtu anatamani Uislamu kweli kweli na wewe na mimi kazi yetu ni kusambaza Uislamu kwa umma wapate kuifahamu kwa hivyo usije ukadharau kazi yako hiyo ni responsibility yako na ni yangu kwa hivyo tujaribu sana jaribu kuzungumza na mtu hata kama mtu mmoja hata kama watu wawili kwa siku zungumza na somebody don't fear opening up to them wengi wanatamani Uislamu lakini hawawezi wakaingia kwa sababu hakuna mtu wa kwa, kwa, kwa guide kama huyu alikuwa na kumbe amekuwa kipita pita mara zote anatamani Uislamu lakini hakuna mtu wa kumshika mkono kumleta ili kwamba na ye pia apate eh, risala ya Uislamu kwa hivyo na ningependa kuomba tusije tukazembea kazini never sleep on the job it is our job to make sure that we call people to Islam tuwaite katika Uislamu ili kwa maana wao pia wapate risala ya mtume wetu sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Kwa hivyo my brothers, it was just a challenge that I'm throwing over to you that you do what needs to be done. I was your brother Omar Al-Bashir until we meet again in another program. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to our show Al Muslima kipindi ambacho kitakuwa kinaangazia maswala mbali mbali ambayo inamhusu mwanamke wa Kiislamu. If you want to live a good life si si wakufuata watu. People are overwhelmed so the numbers are, are great probably what we need is to come up with structures yes, that will be able to absorb people mm-hmm. as they come in in numbers. There's nothing in life that's for free except if it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are some cultures see things that we see that this is violence but to them it's not violence. 
In fact, there are some parts of, of a goat that a woman could not eat. Hmm. So where have we gone wrong? I love the traveling, I love the aviation perspective of uh, seeing different parts of the world. Who doesn't want a state of being free from germs and dirt? You can only achieve this through Sapphire Industries. Sapphire Industries, manufacturers of Uber bathing soap and Uber hotel soap. A soap so good, it brightens up your mood. Uber hand wash, available in apricot, cool breeze and strawberry fragrance. It moisturizes and protects your skin. Uber Bahur hair shampoo, with pleasant bahur and oud fragrance. Confident look, pocket friendly and lovely fragrance. Uber multi-purpose detergent. Experience a new level of cleanliness. We supply to homes, hotels and institutions. You can walk into any of our distributors in South B, South C, Nairobi West and Isili. We also deliver across the country. For orders and inquiries, contact us on 0777-111-332. You can also find us on our social media platforms. Sapphire Industries, improving standards, improving lives. Uber, a purely Kenyan product. Kwa mahamri kaimati, chapati laini na mapishi yote uyapendayo ya kuburudisha na yenye ladha nzuri tumia nyota. Mafuta ya nyota kuboresha afya yako na utaipenda. Mimi ni mfanyi kazi wa msikiti na mimi ni mzazi. Ili kujifunza malezi bora ya watoto wangu, mimi hutazama MTV. I'm a researcher. To level up my knowledge in Islam, I watch Ilm TV. I'm a school principal, and for the best materials for my learners, I watch Ilm TV. Mimi ndere watasi. Mina makastomas wangu, watch Ilm TV. I'm a student to improve my learning. I watch Elm TV. Watch. 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 Watch Elm TV. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah amma ba'd. Nas'alullaha an yuwafiqana lima yuhibbuhu wa yarudha' wa an yuallimana ma yanfa'ana. Ikhwata al-Iman, tunayandalea mahali tulismamia kuhusu sira ya Mtume sallallahu alayhi wa sallam na tunasongea kuhusu vile Ismail alizaliwa alayhi wa sallam na akaye kwa maka ya na mama yake. So mzamza mi mapatikana. Wakapata ni maji ambao imebarikiwa Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala libariki hii maji na ni kama chakula na ni dawa na Mtume sallallahu alaihi wasallam anasema ma uzamzam li mashuri bala maji ya zamzam ukiomba dua yote ile Allah anakukubalia kutoka hiyo siku mpaka wale hii maji ya zamzam bado uh, ipo ukienda haj ama umra Allah atufikishe jaribu kunywa maji ya zamzam na usikunywe maji mengine usijaribu hata kununua minuruloto ingine kunywa hiyo maji ya zamzam na maulama wanataja faida maji ya zamzam ni maji kama ya chumvi ya kisima sio tamu ndio maana maulama wanasema ndio wakati unakunywa ikuwe unakunywa ibada unatarajia Allah kupatia kitu na sio taladhudha na sio kwa raha kukata kiu so ukikunywa maji ya zamzam unaomba dua so wakati maji yamepatikana wanasema kwamba <coughs> kulikuwa na kabila iko Yaman 
walikuwa na safiri wanakuwa napita hapo mara moja moja labda waliona ndege fulani kwa desert watu wa desert wakiona hiyo ndege wanajua chini labda kuna maji walienda kabila hii kabila ilikuwa inaitwa Jurhum Jurhum yani athania ini ya pili sio ile ilimalizwa ini Jurhum athania hii ya pili yani na ni kabila kutoka Yaman wakaenda kwa mama Ismail alayhi salam wakaomba maji akawapea lakini akawaambia hii maji ni yangu nina haki ya kuwakataza ama kuwapea pia wakaomba kuishi karibu akawao kawaruhusu so hawa ndio walimfunza nabi Ismail alayhi salam kiarabu na Imam Bukhari rahimahullah bawaba fi kitabi aliweka mlango katika kitabu yake nisbat Ismail ila al-Yaman kuna sibisha Ismail alayhi salam na na, na Yaman uh, walikuwa wanapita na yani ini riwaya kama sarahat al-Bukhari annahum qalu uh, nazalu uh, Makka baada Ismail walikuja Makka baada Ismail alayhi salam wa qabla an yashiba qabla ajakuwa ajakuwa kijana ako bado ni mdogo wa annahum kanu yamuruna bi hadha al-wad qabla dhalik walikuwa wanapita kwa hiyo hiyo wad kabla yake uh, pia Nabii Ibrahim ameacha familia yake pale na ameenda Palestine kwa sababu ndio official mali yake ya kufanyia da'wa so alikuwa anakuja kutembelea mtoto wake na mke wake lakini zile sisi tuko sure ni kama nne labda zilikuwa mingi lakini zile sisi tunajua ni nne mbili imetajwa kwa Quran mbili imetajwa kwa history ile imetajwa kwa Quran faqad dhakara Allah ta'ala fi al-Qur'an al-Karim Allah ametaja katika Qur'an al-Karim annahu ra'a fi al-manam Ibrahim yani aliona kwa ndoto yadhbah annahu yadhbah Ismail kwamba anamchinja na katika tutaona pia katika vile mtume alipata wahi katika njia ya kupatiana wahi Allah alikuwa anapatia mitume ni ndoto ndoto za mitume zote zilikuwa kweli ndoto zetu ni adghaf ahlam ndoto zetu ni ndoto maybe hazina maana lakini ndoto ya mitume ilikuwa ni ndoto ya kweli so ameona akichinja mtoto wake ndio akamwambia ya abu akamwendea akamwambia ya abu nay inni ara fil manam anni adhbahuk fanzur madha tara mimi naona kwa ndoto nikikuchinja unaona aje mtoto wake alikuwa mtoto mwema alikuwa ni mtume wa Mwenyezi Mungu akasema ya abati fa'al ma tu'mar e baba yangu fanya ulichokiamrishwa satajidu ni insha Allah min as-sabirin utanipata insha Allah siku ya kiyama nikiwa pamoja na walio subiri Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kwa kisa anasema falamma aslama watallahu lil jabin wakati kisu ni shab Am, wamesalimisha amri nabi ibrahim ashawe kisu anataka kumchinja wanadaynahu an ya ibrahim tukamuita ya ibrahim qad saddaqta ar-ru'ya umekubali ndoto yetu inna kadhalika najzi al-muhsinin hivi ndio tunalipa watu wema inna hadha la huwa al-bala'ul mubin allah anasema kwamba hii ni bala wewe unaambia uchinje mtoto wako ambao ulikaa muda mrefu bila kupata lakini hivyo alisamli alisalimisha amri na ndio allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alimpea fadhla ibrahim akupea mitume wengine akamfanya khalil wake واتخذ الله ابراهيم خليلا الله المفانيا نبي ابراهيم رفيقي wake wa karibu hi fadla ya khalil ilipewa watu wawili peke yake iko pewa watu wengine ilipewa rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tume wetu muhammed sallallahu alayhi wa sallam na ibrahim alayhi salam na hawa ni watu wawili baba na, na babu yake mtoto na babu yake kwa sababu yani ibrahim ni kama babu jad rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah Rasul alikuwa anasema inna Allah attakhadhani khalilan kama attakhadha Ibrahim khalila Allah alinchukua rafiki wake wa karibu kama alivyomchukua Ibrahim rafiki wake wa karibu kisha Allah anasema wa fadainahu bi dhibhin adhim akapewa kondomu mwingine aende am sacrifice alikuwa na pembe akaenda akam sacrifice hii ni safari ya kwanza alikuja kumtembelea na pia wanasema wakati dhakara fi sifri eh, sifri takwin hizi vitabu za biblia za kikristo anna ismaila kana akbar min ishaq bi 13 sana alikuwa mkubwa wa ishaq na miaka 13 na 
يعني الله اعلم يعني لكن في vyote vile اسماعيل alikuwa ni mkubwa wa Ishaq baada ya Ishaq kupata Allah alimtuliza Sara kwa kumpatia Ishaq alikuwa anacheka wale malaika wawili walikuja wakasema e, tumekuja kuangamiza kaum ya Lot wale Lot Lot na Ibrahim walikuwa ni cousins kusoma katika historia ya mitume hata nabii Ibrahim alikuwa anawaambia inna fiha Luta ukiona kuangamiza Luta kwa hapo ndani alayhi salam malaika wakasema sisi tunajua nani yako hapo Allah anamwambia ma Allahu alam ma malaika kum. tunajua nani tutaokoa Nuh Allah ndiye anasema tutamuokoa Lot na wale ambao wamemwamini eh, Lot pia wakambashiria wa maraatuhu qaima yani mke wake alikuwa amesimama fadhahikat fabashirnaha bi ishaq wa min wara'i ishaq yaqub alaza kucheka yani alikuwa anashangaa anasema eh, ya wailata yani ni kama yani kivipi aali duana ajuz wa hadha ba'li shaykha mimi nimekuwa mzee nimefika menopause siwezi kuzaa tena huu mme wangu ndio huyu ni mzee 8 years hataza atapata aje mtoto lakini alimuza ta'jabina min amri Allah unastajabishwa na amri ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah ala kulli shay'in qadir yani na pia kuna Allah anataja katika hiyo kisa wa aslahna lahu zawja aslahna lahu zawja ni kwamba alikuwa azai Allah kasafisha hiyo rahim akambadilishi akamwekea rahim ambayo inaweza kubeba e, mtoto So ikhwa tal imani ni kisa ambayo imetajwa. Uh, mara ya pili yani ile imetajwa kwa Quran ni wakati Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala alimwamrisha Ibrahim aende ajenge Kaaba. Ini baada ya washakutana akaambia wa id yarfa Ibrahim alqawaida min albayt. Ibrahim alipoinua kawaid foundation ya nyumba ya Kaaba. So alikuja akaambia nabii Ismail kwamba sisi tumeamrishwa tujenge Kaaba na ndio hiyo Kaaba wakajenga pamoja. Hizi ni safari mbili ziko kwa Quran. Hizo zina shaka. Kuna mbili pia ambazo zinaenda ambatana. E, Ismail alipokuwa mkubwa, tulisema pale mbeleni kwamba alifunzwa Kiarabu na kabila inaitwa Jurhum. Wakampenda na mitume walikuwa na mitume walikuwa ni watu Allah amewapea heiba. Heiba ni ile heshima na sura mzuri. So wewe ukimuona mtume unampenda tu yani hata kama unachukia ile kitu anasema lakini unampenda. Na Mtume sallallahu alaihi wasallam alipewa vitu mbili, haikupewa mitume wengine. Alipewa heiba, heshima, yani mitume wengine kama Isma e, Yusuf alayhi salam, wanawake walimtamani mtume mwanamke wa mfalme, alitaka kuzini na yeye. Lakini uzuri wa Mtume sallallahu alaihi wasallam ilikuwa na heshima. Hakuna mwanamke hata siku moja alikuja akamwambia Rasul nataka kuzini na wewe, waiadhu billah. Ilikuwa ni heiba ya heshima. So akamwozesha akamu lakini Ismail alirudi. I mean Ibrahim alikuja siku moja anatembelea hiyo family. Sasa hiyo ashaozeshwa msichana wa Kijurhum na inshallah tutaangalia nini ilitendeka baada ya mapumziko. Tunamwomba Allah atupatie taufik. Wassadad wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Asalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ikhwata al-iman karibuni katika tukiendelea kutaja sira ya Nabii Ismail alayhi salam uh, katika Ismail ameozeshwa msichana katika kabila ya Jurhum kwa sababu alimpenda na daima ukipenda mtu mzee ama mwanaume akipenda kijana ama akipenda mtu katika dini yake nini sana sana nataka kuwe karibu na yeye anamuozesha Yeye ndio tu ndiye unaweza kuwa karibu na mtu unamwezesha binti yako dada yako ama hata mama kwa sababu anamwambia wa mama yangu tukue karibu yani kwa sababu wewe ni, ni, ni mtu mwema so walimwezesha hivyo Ismail so Nabii Ibrahim alikuja kutembea na Ismail alikuwa ameenda Dar es Salaam kwenda kuwinda ama kutafuta chakula so akamuuliza um, vipi nyinyi maisha yenu ikoaje huyo mwanamke alikomplain maana huyu ni stranger amjui kama ni nani lakini alianza kukomplain maisha yetu ni ngumu nini akamwambia 
e, wakirudi msalimie na muambia badilisha atabatul bab ile ile mali ya kufunga mlango ile kwa ni kinaya ya mtaliki so nabi ismail alikuja akafila hapa kulikuwa na mtu akasema ni nini kuna mtu amekuja akasema na kuna mzee anakaa hivi hivi na hivi amekuja kuna ujumbe wote amekuachia akasema naam akasema nikuja nikusalimia na akamwambia badilisha ile atabatul bab hiyo mali ya kufunga mlango akamwambia ni baba yangu na ameniamrisha nikutaliki rudi kwa familia yako kwa nini alimrudisha ali, mtaliki kwa sababu huyu ni mke wa mtume anafaa jua kwamba mitume hali yao ni ngumu hakuna mtume alikuja akapata maisha ya raha so anafaa kusubiri na anafaa kuwa na subra akijua kwamba yeye ni mke wa mtume wa Mwenyezi Mungu uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala so hiyo ndio sababu wewe ukiolewa na mtu ambaye kwa society labda ni ali msomi anachukua hukumu ya mitume asubiri asikimbilie dunia na hii mali ni ugonjwa sababu kila mtu anaikimbilia anaikimbilia ambaye ana tatibu hii mali ni maulama kwa kuambia watu chukue ni mali ya halali piteni hapa msipite hapa so hivyo ndio mitume walikuwa na mtume alikuwa anasema ni'mal idam al khal ama khil mchuzi ya mitume mtu alikuwa anakula mkate una imagine mitume ndio walikuwa wanatumia na ile si ile vinegar vinegar ambao ni kali mtu anakula hivyo na mitume walikuwa wanakula wanakuwa wanakula hivyo so almuhim nabii ibrahim baada ya muda alirudi akapata ibrahim ismail alioa mwanamke mwingine same same kabila jurum lakini this time alikuwa ni mwanamke anaitwa wa jamaa anaitwa mudadha uh, ibn amr huyo alikuwa ndio chief wa hiyo kabila sasa so this time ameoa mwanamke ambaye ni bwana ni hikma ya allah kwa sababu ili kuja kubadilisha face kwamba sasa wao ndio wanaongoza maka na alikuwa ndio kabila so hizi ndio mara nne mara ya kwanza tumesema mbili imetajwa kwa Qur'an mbili kwa history hii kwa Qur'an ni ya kujenga Kaaba na kujenga na, na alipomwona kimchinja hii nyingine ni wakati alioa in two different uh, uh, wanawake wawili tofauti na pia ukiitaka kisa pia Imam Bukhari ametaja katika kitabu Al-Anbiya kitabu ya manabii yani vile manabii walikuwa wa qad razaqahu Allah Ismail min ibna Tamudadha yeye huyu binti ya huyu chief na Ismail walipata watoto 12 wanaume wote ni majina ngumu Allahu alam kama tutakuwa tunaisoma vizuri e, wa kwanza alikuwa ni Nabit wa pili ni Nabiut wa tatu ni Qaidar wa nne ni Ad Ad Adbiya Adbi Adbail Allahu alam wa Mibsham wa Mishma' wa Dauma wa Misha wa Haddid ama Haddud wa Taima wa Yatur wa Nafis wa Qaiduman yani hizi ni majina ngumu zao za kitambo so hao wana watoto 12 walikuwa na watoto wa Ismail na huyu binti ya ya huyu chief Mudadha eh, Mudadha ibn eh, uyu, ibn Amr wa pia Sheikh anasema watashaabat haula 12 kabila katika watoto 12 katoka kabila 12 wasakanat kullaha fi makkah mudda min azzaman wote walikuwa naishi makkah muda mrefu wakanat jullu maishatahum idhak tijara min bilad yaman ila bilad sham wa masr so ilikuwa biashara hizi hawa watoto kabila zao ilikuwa wanaenda sham siria huko wanaenda masr wanaenda yaman na mnajua kwamba watu wengi ambao wanasafiri kwa sababu ya biashara wengi wanaendaga wanakaa mahali So utasikia mtu labda ni nani anaenda liishi huko ndani ndani mfano kwa mkabila ambao sio yake ukimuuliza ulifika vipi hapa kwa sababu ya bia, ya, ya biashara na ni wengi hata nchi yetu na nchi zingine especially kwanza nchi zetu East Africa vile Waarabu walikuja walikuja through biashara na ndio dini ilienea Af- kwetu East Africa so uh, ثم انتشرت هذه القبائل الى ارجاء الجزيره في شيء زي قبيله زكاينيا جزيره يا ورابو بل والى خارج حتى انجب شيخنا سما انجا ورابو ثم ادرجت احوالهم في غيا في غياهب الزمان الى اولاد نابت وقيدر كشا هاوت ووتو لي بوتير يعني 
walipotea isipokuwa kabila mbili kabila ya watoto wa Nabit mtoto wa Nabi Ismail wa kwanza na Qaidar na pia Qaidar hao watoto wawili wa kupotea kabila mbili hizi zingine zilisahaulika hata wakati zidharat alhadharat alambat abna Nabit na ika ile ilienea ile civilization ya warabu ilienea kwa watoto wa Nabit ambao walikuwa wanaitwa Anbat fi shamal alhijaz katika yani uh, northern part ya Hijaz wakawanu daula qawiya asimatiha Batra wakatengeza daula ya nguvu capital city yake ilikuwa inaitwa uh, Batra uh, al madina al athariya al qadima al ma'ruf fi junub al ardun ini madina ambayo sahi iko ardun uh, iko uh, jordan wakadana li hadhihi al daula uh, wakadana li hadhihi al daula نبطيا من من اطراف ولم يستطع احد ان يناويها حتى جاء الرومان وقضوا عليها ان الدوله اللي كانت نغوفو اللي تنجزوا مع توتو نابت ان باتاوا ولقوا تنجز كابيتال سيتي ياو انيتوا البطرا ني تاون ايكو معروف بها صحي ايكو اردن اللي كان الدوله كان نغوفو كنا متنازا كيانغوشا مpaka وكاكوجيا رومانس دي وكايتوا kwa romans ndio walikuja wakapata sasa nguvu baada ya hawa kumbe hata waarabu ndio walikuwa na nguvu kuliko romans ndio romans walikuja wakakuwa na nguvu lakini pia walikuja waka Allah alibashiria watamalizwa wakaangushwa ghulibat ar-rum yani uh, so hivi ndio yani walikaa na watoto wa qaidar walibaki watoto wa qaidar wote qaidar bin ismail walibaki maka pia na wao etana saluna هناك حتى كان منهم عدنان وولده معدا سو نابت وتوتوكو متنجز دوله محلي هاو ndi wanakumbukwa walibaki qaidar na watoto wake wakabaki maka paka wakapata mtoto anaitwa adnan na adnan pia akapata mtoto anaitwa maadda wa minhum hufizat alarab aladnaniya ansabaha kwa huyu qaidar ndio waarabu walihifadhiwa na sabi yao wale wa anbat wale ambao watoto wa nabit wao walikuwa kivyao labda wale wako jordan wale wako wapi wote hao ni watoto wa nabit lakini hao wako hijaz hao wako maka madina hao wote hao wanachukuliwa watoto wa maadda eh, ambaye ni adnan ibn maadda mtoto wa adnan na mtoto wake ambao wote wametoka kwa kaidar so Qaidar ndio muhimu katika nasab ya Mtume sallallahu alaihi wasallam na Waarabu wote ambao walikubaki katika Hijaz maka. Wa Adnan huwa jaddul hadi wa ishuruna min sulalati nasab an-nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yaani hii sulalatu nasab an-nabawi hii kizazi cha Mtume sallallahu alaihi wasallam kimehifadhiwa yani na huyu Adnan ambaye ni 21st yani grandfather wa mtume babu ya mtume wa 21 yani waqad warada annahu kana idha intasaba fa balagha adnan yamsik wa yaqul imefika kwa mtume kana yamsik yani alikuwa akifikia adnan anasema kadhaban nasabun wala ambao wanaandika tarehe nasab ya mtume mtume alikuwa anasema mfike adnan na mkizidisha ni uongo hiyo na fala yatajawaz yani alikuwa hapiti katika hiyo yani na pia Imam Tabari katika tarehe ya Tabari ametaja hii e, kisa. Ikhwata al-Iman kufikia hapo tutakoma tutaendelea insha Allah biidhnillah tuendelee kutaja vile kisa iliendelea. Vipi waliconnect mpaka Mtume sallallahu alaihi wasallam akifika? Ndio maana kisha tuingie katika maisha ya Mtume sallallahu alaihi wasallam akizaliwa na tutamwomba Allah taufik wal ilm was sadad wal ikhlas. Nasalu Allah jalla fi ulah ان يبارك في عمرنا وفي علمنا وفي كل ما نملك يا رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته sallallahu alaihi wasallam kutegua jeshi jeshi lile ikawa ndani yake kuna Ali bin Abi Talib na Zubair bin Al-Awwam na Al-Miqdad bin Al-Aswad na vile vile Abu Martadin Al-Ghanawi
waliweza kuandamana na walikuwa na wajuzi zaidi katika vita kwenda kwa mwanamke yule mwisho ya Ali bin Abi Talib akaweza kumtishia vitisho vitisho akaweza kutoa barua ile na Mtume Ali Salam akarudishwa au akarudishwa Mtume Ali Salam Muhani ni dada yake yeye na aliweza kuajiri baadhi ya mawashirikina wawili kuweza kuajiri na kuweza kuwapatia himaya na hifadhi na Ali bin Abi Talib radhiallahu anhu akawa na msimamo mkali sana kwa bahawa sio lazima waweze kuwekwa hapa wewe unaweka washirikina ndani ya nyumba yako wakati hawa ndio waliweza kumuudhi Mtume sallallahu alaihi wasallam hatukubali hata siku moja kwa hivyo waondoe katika nyumba hii I love Allah he loves Allah she loves Allah we all love Allah he gave us the sun and the moon and the stars he sends down the rain وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. My name is Mumtaz Ahmed. Welcome to Young Storytellers. And now I'm going to welcome Ahlam for for reading to us a story about Prophet Yusuf. Welcome Ahlam. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. My name is Ahlam Abd Salam. I'm going to be reading the story of Prophet Ya'qub alayhi salam. Ya'qub was also known as Israel. Israel's children could see that Yusuf was their father's favorite. This made them very jealous. They became so jealous, some of them actually wanted to kill him. The jealous brothers finally decided to throw Yusuf into a deep well. They went to Israel, their father, to ask if they could take Yusuf out with them. They said they would, they would teach him to be a good shepherd. Israel would not let Yusuf go because he thought the others were planning to do something bad. One day, Yusuf went to Israel and said that he had had a strange dream. If the, in the dream, Yusuf had seen the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bowing down to him. In the dream, what did the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam see? Prophet, moon, sun, and stars bowing to him. MashaAllah, that's correct. Israel felt that the dream had a message. Yusuf was going to have a great future. He told Yusuf not to tell his brothers about the dream. Israel's son was, was still plan thinking of their plan to kill Yusuf. They pestered Israel to let them take Yusuf with them to their work. At last, Israel agreed, but he made them promise to look after him. They were so bad, they knew they would break their promise. At the end of the day, they asked Yusuf to take off his shirt. They, ki they killed a sheep and put blood all over Yusuf's shirt. Then they threw Yusuf into a well. When they went home and showed the shirt to Israel, pretending to be very upset. They told their father that Yusuf had got, had got left behind and a wolf had eaten him. Israel was very upset, but he did not believe the story. He knew that one day Allah would bring Yusuf back to him. Poor Yusuf spent the night in the well. The next morning, when someone put the bucket down the well to get water, he sat up. He sat in the bucket. He sat in the bucket. The man had to get help to pull the bucket up. He he was very surprised to see a boy in it. The man was a merchant. He the merchant decided to take Yusuf with him to Egypt and sell him as a slave. When they arrived in Egypt, one of the noble families bought Yusuf. The man who bought him told his wife that they should take good care of him, and, they, and he was a good-looking child, uh, and they had no child of their own. Yusuf became one of the family. That is the end of my story. I hope, all, I hope you all enjoyed. Now I welcome my sister Mumtaz to read the Quran part. Thank you, Ahlam, for reading for us a wonderful story about the Prophet. Now I'm going to read the Quran, some Quran verses related to the story of Ahlam. Are you ready? Yes! Let's start. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Alif Lam 
Thank you, Mithas, for welcoming me. My, my story is about loving your brothers and sisters in Islam. Love brings peace to the community, not just any community, but the community, an Islamic community. So um, there's an adage that states, a friend in need is a friend indeed. So when you help somebody, some, sometime when you need help, they will also help you when you need that help. And also, the, the Prophet Sallallahu tells us, Al-Muslim aqul Muslim, which means a Muslim is a brother to another Muslim. What does the hadith say? Muslim aqul Muslim. Which means? A Muslim is a brother to another Muslim. Let me tell you guys a story on my topic. There was a poor man and a rich man. The poor man was called Abdurrahman, while the, the rich man was called Abdurrahim. Abdurrahman was a very poor man. His daughter was very ill. She was suffering from pneumonia. And the rich man, was, oh, he was a kind person. One time he saw Abdurrahman on the road, and then he, was, he had written his story on a piece of board. He asked, Abdurrahim asked Abdurrahman what was his problem. He narrated to him the whole story. Adrahim was so gentle, he gave him a lot of money. He told him to, to, to help his daughter. He went rushing to, to the hospital and he paid his daughter's hospital bill. After a while, she, she was treated immediately and then she fully recovered. And then Adrahman, he got a business and he made his own company. Now he was rich. He didn't feed anyone. So after a while, the, the same rich man, his company was falling apart. He was falling sick and he could not pay his rent. He was chased out of his house and he became a street guy. And then after a while, like a few months, the poor guy saw him. Abdurrahman saw him on the streets. He recognized him and then he told him, you helped me when I was in need. Now I will help you when you are in need. So what do we learn from this story? It has, yes. When somebody helps you, you have to thank that person by doing a good favor to him. Yes. Yes, Rabbi? A friend in need is a friend indeed. Yes. Second? If everybody has their time and you should not ignore them because one day you will also have the same problem. That's true. And then after when the rich man Adrahim was helped, then Adrahman and Adrahim they became business partners and they were all successful and they lived happily ever after. Thank you for listening to my story. Did you enjoy it? Yes. Now I'm going to introduce my sister and invite her to, to read for us as an, a very interesting story. I hope you learned something. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Aisha. I'm going to. Thank you for inviting me, Zahra. I'm going to read a story which is I Love You, Mommy. Yahya had just come back from Sunday school. He always had lots of fun there, but today was extra special because his teacher had told him the story of Sharaf and Din. When Yahya go, got home, he saw his younger brother Zayn, who had, who has five, who was five, playing with the the trains, 
train set. Zayn, Zayn, sit down with, with me and I will tell you a, a really good story about a boy called Sharaf al -Din. So Zayn sat down next to his brother and listened eagerly. And Yahya began his story. Sharaf was a very kind boy and he loved and cared for his parents. He always listened to me and was happy to serve them. One day, Sharaf's mother was nearly was nearly asleep and felt thirsty, so she asked Sharaf to get to get her a glass of water. Sharaf was very happy to get her water, but when he got back to his mother mother's room, he found her fast asleep. Sharaf did not want to disturb her. He said to himself, "Mom had a long day and she needs to rest. I should not wake her up." Oh, that's very kind of him," said Zayn, jumping up and down in excitement. And Zayn. And then, while well he stood, while well he stood, to, well he, well he stood next to his mother for a very long time, thinking that when he woke, she, that she woke, she would be, still be thirsty. So Sharaf waited and waited until finally she woke up. Oh my dear son, have you been waiting all this time? Yes, mother," replied Sharaf lovingly. "I want you to have." To have water as soon as he woke up, his mother was very touched and blessed Sharaf for his kindness. And and you know Allah was so happy with Sharaf that when when he grew up, he was a very famous man. Sheikh Sharaf al Din, the famous scholar. The end. Did you like it, Zain? Asked Yahya. Asked Yahya. Oh yes! Exclaimed Zain. Yahya and Zain happily went outside to play. The next day, Yahya was at school and Zain was at home. Zain was very bored. He had played with all toys. He had played with the cat and also drawn some pictures. Zain was sitting on the couch doing nothing when he remembered of the story Sheriff Artin. Zain suddenly had an idea and he ran to his mother's room. His mother was sitting on the on the bed reading a book when Zain came in. Mommy, mommy, go to sleep. Asked Zain. His mother was puzzled by her son's request, but she did. She had only a chapter left till her till her book was finished. So she she said, "Wait a wait a minute, Zain. Let me finish this. No, 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 mommy. Just sleep, please. Go to sleep." Pleaded Zain. But Zain, his mother said, but she saw that Zain would not go until she slept. She lay down, closed her eyes, and pretended to snore. But Zayn was was not satisfied. Mommy, are you thirsty? He asked. No, darling. I just drank a cup of tea five minutes ago. She cried in her. No, man. No, mommy. You have to be thirsty. Say, say you are thirsty, mommy. Please, mommy. Said impatiently. Okay, Zayn. I'm thirsty. His mother gave gave in. Zayn ran ran downstairs and fetched a glass of water. He hid the glass behind his back and insisted that his mother sh should sleep again. His mother went wanted to understand what Zayn wanted, so she pretended to sleep again. She closed her eyes and waited. The room waited. The room was silent. Zayn stood there with the glass, with the glass of water, not wanting to disturb his mother. A few minutes, she opened her one. One eye and said, Can I open my eyes now, Zayn? Well, okay, mommy, and here is your glass of water. And now Allah is happy with me, like she was with Sharaf. Zayn's mother finally understood Zayn and, and smiled. She hugged Zayn and took him on her lap and said, Of course, Zayn, Allah is very happy with you. Allah loves the children who care for and respect their parents. Zayn was very happy to hear this. Mommy, mom added, Zayn, you know the meaning of Sharaf's story is that children should always listen to their parents and take care of them as mommy, mom and dad take care of them when they are children. Allah is very happy with obedient children just like you, Zayn, who never shout or disrespect their parents. Allah loves us much, as Allah loves us very much and wants us to be always good. Zain hugged his mother and said, I love you, mommy. Did you enjoy my story? Yes! yes. It's
time for lessons and values, I'm going to invite my sister Sahara. Welcome. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Sarah Said and I'm going to do the moral values. What did you learn from Ahlam's story? 